Hey everyone, welcome back to The Right Angle, and today I'm gonna to be going over the third and final fundamental structure of woodworking, the box. Now anytime you're making a box, it usually consists of five different pieces. Two sides, a front, back, and bottom. Now you can also add a lid, depending on your project's needs, or the box's use case. But for today's purposes, I just wanted to show you a basic box using some of the wood that I had laying around the shop. Now what I've also done is eight steps of squaring like I've done in previous videos, which if you're not familiar with or you're interested in learning those eight steps, make sure to check the links in the description below, as well as a little notification that I'll have on this video. But now that we know that my pieces are flat and parallel, and cut to final width and length, we're ready to lay out the locations of the joinery as well as the groove that's gonna help house the bottom. And usually anytime I'm making a box as well, when a groove is integrated into the project, I'll usually lay it out as if the pieces were gonna be put together. And by doing this, I know how to orient which side of the board is gonna have the groove. And the best way to do that or to signify which side it needs to go on, I usually use some form of a colored pencil. And it doesn't have to be anything pretty, but just mark the inside edge. That way when you go over to the router or the table saw, whichever you're gonna to use to make the groove, you know exactly where the location of the groove needs to be. So this isn't exactly the location of the groove itself, but simply to mark it so I know which side of the board the groove needs to be. I've also decided when doing joinery for this particular box, I wanted to do a basic box joint. Now generally, a box joint finger is going to be usually the thickness of the board. So this is three quarters of an inch, so usually the finger width would be three quarters. But in this case, I just wanted to keep it really simple and basic. I don't really have any number in mind. I just want to make sure that I leave enough room for the groove that's going to help house the bottom. Now anytime you're setting up to make a box joint, I always like to use the pieces that we're actually gonna use. That way we know we have an accurate measurement in terms of the exact thickness of the boards that I'll be cutting the joints for. All right, now that I laid out for the depth of the cut for the box joint, I also realized that I wanna make sure that I lay out or at least know where the groove's gonna end up being. Now the groove I want to be a quarter inch thick. So I marked out where the bottom of the groove would start and where the top of the groove would end. Now usually if the, you have a quarter inch in width of a groove, you usually wanna double that underneath the groove to help support it. And that's just usually a general rule of thumb. I've seen people that do it less and some that do it more. Now, the last thing we also did was, because I know where the top of the groove ends, I just marked a quarter inch above that groove. That way I can make sure that the groove doesn't get in the way of the box joint, which left me with one inch from the bottom to the bottom of the box joint as well as one inch from the top to the top of the box joint. Now I'm gonna cut this over on the bandsaw, then remove any excess, and then touch it up with our chisels. I forgot to mention, anytime I'm making this type of box joint, usually kind of by hand like we're doing, I'll usually make a bunch of relief cuts, that way it's easy to remove any excess material. All right, so we finished cutting all the joints using the bandsaw and the chisels to clean up the edges, get a really nice tight joint. So in the end, it should look something like that. All right, so we finished the joinery and now we're gonna head over to the router table, which I've already set up with a quarter inch bit. We're gonna go a quarter of an inch deep plus a sixteenth of an inch. That way we have a little bit of playroom when we're going to glue it up. It also gives, in our case, solid wood, a little bit of room for expansion and contraction. Now, usually that's not an issue when you're dealing with pores that are three inches in width or less. Obviously our, our box is quite small, so really we shouldn't have to be worrying about too much movement. Um, but just something to keep in mind if you're doing a project with uh, bigger dimensions. I've already got my stop blocks on each side to make sure that I don't cut too far through the piece because I don't want to see the groove coming out on the ends of our box. And then I also label to make sure that I know that my end pieces are the ones that are the through cut and then my longer pieces are the ones that I have a stop cut. All right, so I already got ahead of myself and I started routing the bottom panel. Now, I wanna use a half inch round over bit which I can slowly and incrementally raise until it fits perfectly into this groove. Now, the round over I thought would look pretty cool as well as it gives me the opportunity because we know that we already routed an exact quarter inch diameter groove in our side pieces, all we gotta do now is take this hardwood piece and slowly and incrementally raise the bit until we get an edge that fits perfectly snug in that groove. 
I brought all the pieces over here and did a preliminary sanding for the insides of the pieces, or at least the areas that are gonna be most difficult to reach once the box is glued up. I've also done a dry run with the clamps to make sure they're in position. It also gives me a good chance to practice and make sure I know exactly where the clamps are gonna go once the glue is out. Uh, it also allows me to set the clamps to the perfect width that they need to be, and that way it just makes for the glue up to be that much smoother. So, we're ready for glue up. Alright, so there you have it, the last fundamental structure of woodworking. I hope you guys enjoyed this series on the fundamental structures, and if you're interested in the other previous two, the panel and the frame, check my description below where I'll leave some links, that way you guys can find some easy access. Otherwise, I hope this content is helping you guys build with more confidence. I look forward to bringing more content to you soon. And other than that, I hope you guys have a nice weekend, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.